Hey everybody. So, um, hopefully this doesn't get too boring. Um, uh, we're going to be looking at this piece of paper uh, sitting on top of a 148 because it's the, the guinea pig radio. Um, the Euro radio schematic, which I like. It's a very cleanly drawn schematic. So I hope this is visible. Otherwise, it's a complete waste of time. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is pin 17 on the 8719. It seems like it's a not very popular mod that people are doing. Um, and the people who are doing it, it just seems to me like it's it's the implementation, while might actually do something, it's all wrong. Um, so when I realized the implementation was just completely wrong, um, I set out to correct that implementation. But how did I come across this? I never heard of this pin 17 thing until yesterday. And the reason that I figured it out or rediscovered it or discovered it for myself, even though other people have discovered it decades ago, that there's some interaction with the feedback inputs uh, of the PLL, that it does something bizarre. Um, you know, it takes you to another place, so to speak, regardless, uh, you know, in conjunction with the, um, the other uh, inputs, uh, the other divider inputs. But... I accidentally shunted 16 and 17 together when 16 was at a logic high, which in this case is about 8 volts. So I stuffed about 8 volts into that pin and it went into like 10 meters. And I was like, okay, well, what the hell? Why did it do that? I was expecting it to just die if I did that, but it didn't die. It became very unstable. Don't get me wrong. The PLL became very unstable, but it, but when it locked and unlocked and unlocked and unlocked, it, it was up in 10 meters. So, but looking at the frequency it was like but it was an evenly it, it still stepped uh, channel spacing was still even i was like holy well that's interesting so i set out to figure out why that was so you know i went looking for what i can on the 8719 i had done that before i knew that was fairly futile came to the schematic looked at it and said hmm dc cap blocking cap filters um we don't want eight volts getting into this pin you know we, we really don't want 8 volts getting in here. Um, this is also the signal path, you know, for the feedback. So it's 800 kilohertz uh, sine wave on this line. Um, that it's being sampled and it's making um, corrections to the VCO from that. Um, so, you know, to keep this in phase. So, you know, and, and, and I can get into, you know, frequency synthesis, but, um, you know, which is what we're doing here. But... That's another topic of discussion for another time. But, you know, we, we ought not to be putting 8 volts there. Um, we ought not to be connecting that to the power rail. There's a signal there. Um, and when you do that, you kill half that signal. So if the thing becomes unstable, it's because of that. And so I went and grabbed an inductor and jumped right across. And sure enough, it did that, and it was stable because I wasn't drowning out the signal, at least not near as much as I was before by just jumpering it to an eight volt rail. Uh, like you're effectively doing it um, when you jumper this to any other of these pins. These are all just pulled high internally to the eight volt rail. Uh, I mean, the VCC, it, it, it's the same thing, just through a resistor. Um, so, you know, it, it's still gonna drown it out. Um, so that said, so I sent off a few emails. Hey, what's up with this? Why did this, um, uh, you know, what's this about? Have you ever heard of something like this? And I got several replies from several people. Oh, yeah, yeah, this has been known for a long time. And you go, here's a couple of forum posts you know, outlining what you do with it. So I went looking around for more. There's like damn near 10 variations of how you would jumper pin 17 to the 8-volt rail. One of them is to one of the other um, divider inputs, which is effectively jumpering it to the 8-volt rail because there's a pull-up resistor inside. Um, another one's with a diode. Another one's with a 10-turn pot. And they're trying to tweak it so that they can... Every incarnation of this modification was all about connecting that to the 8-volt rail without any consideration about the signal that's present there. So let's just connect that connect something to it and you know and then do some other things in there and try to um there was one rendition of of where we were going to alter the um the loop mixer and um uh, beef up the power so that we could um we could get a larger signal to compensate it's the thing 
everything that you could possibly do except actually put eight volts into that pin the right way. <laughs> which which is blow, what blows my mind. It's like, wow, guys. You would have been better off just pulling out this cap right here. Just pull it out and short it, short it across. You would have been better off. But nope. We had to we had to stuff eight volts in there just by jumpering a wire or a variable resistor and tweaking it so that we could get the right voltage without actually causing the PLL to unlock. I mean, wow. So anyways, when I realized that, put an inductor across, I said, okay, well, that actually works. But I tried to then, well, what happens if I try to toggle it like a... Um, like a like a like a divider input. Well, it didn't work. Um, it, it, not like that. It doesn't work as a divider input. I don't understand the interaction between eight volts and that pin. I don't understand what's going on. Something is going on internally. Without this the drawing of this IC, we, we're probably never going to know. Um, it just isn't that important. So knowing this, I said, "Oh, well, everybody's got it wrong." Um, no wonder they're having problems because when I put the inductor, I didn't have any problems with my VCO. It just worked. There's no no additional mods in here and the loop mixer and nothing. I didn't have to do any changing of values or special tweaks to the VCO. I didn't have to do anything. It just worked. So, but I don't know why, and I probably will never know why, and I don't know that I really honestly care. So I said. Oh, well, if that works and we're going to exploit some glitch in the silicon, which I believe it is, well, hell, I'll exploit it too. So I was working on on this. I had just finished the board layout on this thing, okay? Um, when I was tinkering around this, I said, okay, well, how can I use this to my advantage? I have to switch this. So I'm going to need a transistor, inductor, and you know, so on and so forth um, to, to switch 8 volts into this. Um, so I started coming up with it, figuring out the opportune times to switch the 8 volts into this. But I said, you know what, let me do a test and see really how, what, what, you know, how this um, is going to interact with this. So I put my inductor from VCC to pin 17. And there's not going to be a whole hell of a lot of difference between putting my inductor to pin 10 and, 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 and NFM because there's still a resistor in line. So, but just, just to keep in spirit with making sure that I'm not just jumpering a whole bunch of voltage in it, I put a, um, uh, like a 4.7K resistor in between VCC, my inductor, and then FN. So I was effectively pumping the 8 volts into this. Um, and I was like, okay, well, that would limit current and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, but we, I don't know what the interaction is going on here. But it worked just fine even then. So uh, basically a 4.7K resistor and, an, and a 470 microhenry inductor between VCC and FN. Um, so I said, okay, and I left it be. So um, I walked away from it, left it cooking, um, came back, and I wanted to see if there was anything peculiar about the chip. So first, it's, it was still working. Um... I measured the temperature with this guy right here. So I shot the thing um, and said, okay. Um, and it measured like um, like 38C. And I said, hmm, that's not that hot, but that definitely seems warmer than it should be. Um, it's definitely way above, um, you know, the ambient in the room. Um, so I removed the, um, the mod and... Uh, walked away for 10 minutes and the thing cooled down to room temperature. And I said, okay, that's not good. Now there's no current flowing there, but certainly there is some interaction. There's something going on, which is why they don't want any voltage in here. Something is going on. It's DC blocked, okay? Um, there's a reason for that. Um, I couldn't tell you what it is, but pumping DC into this is probably not a good idea. So... My suggestion for anybody who wants to experiment with this, um, while it does do something, take care that um, uh, you don't overheat the chip. I didn't try any long-term directly connection through an inductor directly connecting VCC to FN. Um, I bet it would get hotter. Um, 
the guys who are doing pin 10 to FN, the reason they probably never had any thermal issues is because there's the pull-up resistor internally in the package. Those who were doing the diode, they had the 0.7 volt drop. Um, may, that probably did some uh, had, had a, a, an effect of doing some current limiting as well. Um, the guys with the variable resistors that are trying to compensate for not draining the signal or killing the signal, of course, that's going to you know do some current limiting. There's some peculiar thing around that. So when I said that, okay, I went and got another chip, threw it in the socket, put the wire back, uh, the, the, the inductor resistor back in, and sure enough, that one heated up. So, okay, so there's something about this that causes the PLL to get to get warmer. It's not, I mean, it's not blazing hot. I mean, you know, 30, 30 you know, between 30 and 40 C is not blazing hot. It's definitely warmer than I would want it to be. It's definitely over room temperature. Um, you know, it's definitely getting warmer, so we're using more, we're, we're dissipating more heat, so we're using more power for whatever reason. Um, it, I don't know. So I'm going to call it a not safe mod, it, unsafe, because we don't know why we're getting it. I don't know why there's a thermal rise in this. There's, there's definitely a, ther effect, a thermal effect going on when you stuff 8 volts in there. Um, stuffing 8 volts directly into the pin with nothing would probably have a very disastrous effect over time. I didn't try it. I'm not going to. Um, I'm not in the business of destroying, uh, you know, perfectly good PLL chips, um, uh, you know, like that. So, um, you know, all I can really say about this is um, it's a questionable mod. Um, uh, it may or may not be bullshit. Um, well, it works for one, so it's not bullshit, but it, it may be uh, long term, it may be harmful. I don't know. Um, so, questions, comments, thoughts, um, information out there, guys. Um, anyways, sorry for the bore. Um, next up, speaking of this, the reason that, um, or what spurred this, this spurred this on. MC 145 106 and a 148. Yes, that's what that is. Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk more about the um, swaparoo of the M8719 with the 145 106 later. Catch you next time.